Yo, what's up guys? Thank you so much for checking out this video. And as you can see from the previous little montage I put together, I did end up getting my first copy of Sunspot as well as a Mutant Awakening gem from the bundles in the game. And then um, I also pulled two copies of Elsa Bloodstone, bringing her to Sig 40, which was enough for me to use my skill T5CC on her. And in the background, uh, we're going to take a look at my two new rank threes, Sunspot and then Elsa. And uh, both of these champs have been around for a while and there's plenty of videos on them. So I'm not going to, you know, tell you this is the, the greatest gameplay you're ever going to see. But we're just going to kind of see the numbers of Sunspot when he gets to four flare states, how big his special twos are. And then with Elsa, we're going to see a full takedown of Rolk. I just kind of uh, do her special three add the cruelties technique and then try to keep those up for the entire fight and it goes pretty well i think you'll enjoy that clip very much um but yeah for me uh in terms of the t5 cc and the rank three situation i now have five rank threes i've used five classes and i actually still have a mutant a mystic and a science ready to go i'm just waiting for the correct champ and the good news is that with uh my current group I actually have my prestige pretty much set for who my top five champions are going to be and who are going to get SIG stones, which means moving forward in the future, I might be able to have just a little bit more fun, perhaps ranking up an undupe champ or something that is just a little bit more of a useful champion than trying to get my prestige locked in. So my first rank three was Dr. Doom. And um, I basically had to sell my soul to get this guy. Um, you want to talk about the most rare resources in the game and using them. That's what I did for uh, Mr. Doom there. And the, what I'm talking about is 100% Abyss. I chose a Mystic on the uh, Nexus Crystal and I ended up pulling him as uh, one of my 10 champions, which was fantastic. And then I had no way to awaken him, but I knew that I wanted him to be my top champ. So I used the generic awakening gem and I used as many Sig Stones as I could at the time. He's finally around 120, which is a pretty good spot for a champ like that. And uh, yeah, that's that's the way it works uh, sometimes is you need to just you know beat the content. You get those extremely rare resources and you put them to use. Um, my other rank threes, I also have Silver Surfer. I used a Cosmic Awakening Gem from the Abyss on him and uh, took him up. He's around Sig 120 as well. And then uh, my third, uh, well, actually, I did this one before Surfer, but he's sort of next in line is Mysterio. And yeah, Mysterio was sort of a compromise position for me because I really needed to use my tech. And uh, he, he, for me, he's sort of like a good intersection of usefulness. Like he certainly has lots of really good utility, um, but you know, he certainly is no warlock or, or even guillotine 2099 or ghost, but I felt very good about that decision. And I actually have used him. He's been on my defense and I have used him to take out some, some difficult dominoes. Uh, I'll probably do a little video on Mysterio eventually. Uh, but then I had formed some other T5 CC and was really waiting for the right champs and ended up getting Elsa, who she was kind of my backup option. I really, really wanted Nick Fury, but I told myself if I ever dupe Elsa, uh, that would be good enough for me to take her all the way up because I do think she's a very useful champ. She's very fun. And um, her dupe actually is one of those where the more Sig Stones you give her, the better, but she doesn't need to be Sig 200. It's just sort of like a little added bonus against uh, Science and XL champions. Um, which is good. As you can see right now, um, I'm facing an XL science champion and I'm, I'm reaping those benefits. Um, but also it, it's just sort of like one of those things where she doesn't need to be SIG 200. Just every SIG stone you give her increases her prestige and it also increases her ability. It's sort of a win-win. Um, so I do want to talk a little bit about making decisions for rank threes as the video continues to play, um, because I feel like a lot of people, um, especially those who aren't throne breaker yet, are very particular about who they want to use their T5CC on. And I do get that because it's such a rare resource. We're finally getting to the point where people are starting to form them. And, you know, a lot of people get them in a class that's not ideal. Um, and, you know, they watch videos on YouTube that are like, who are the best champions to rank three? And they always see stuff like, oh, Thing and Corvus and Warlock and uh, Nick Fury 
And, you know, they're, they're sort of like the top of every class that everyone knows and everyone agrees on. But, you know, the bottom line is we're getting close to 200 champions in this game, which means, you know, the six star pool is immense. And the chances of you getting one and being able to awaken them uh, is is very improbable if you're targeting one champ. You know, normally people will get lucky with like one champ or in my case, like you can beat the abyss and then you get a little bit more control over your pulls. But like even people in my alliance, which I consider, you know, we're like in the top uh, 20 or we're in the top 30 in AQ. And like in terms of alliance rating, we're definitely in like the top 20 or 30 i think for alliance rating so we got some pretty stacked rosters and like you know we have guys who have dark hawk at rank three annihilus at rank three doc ock at rank three korg i have elsa bloodstone mysterio you know and these are champs that like often don't even make the uh content creators top five list but like you really have to think about is this champ good is this champ going to help me do something in act seven you know because act seven has a six star um, attack buff and it's like if you have champs that are useful if they have some kind of end game utility you may want to just bite the bullet to get throne breaker now so that you have more access to more t5cc in the future if that makes sense um so now uh talking a little bit about the offers that came out um i do agree with the uh, general sense of the community that i was disappointed that there wasn't a way for the cavalier players to pick up a couple offers and get a substantial amount of t5cc especially of the selector variety so that they can make it to throne breaker uh, i was very disappointed to see that um, but I do see both sides of the equation a little bit, which is that, you know, if you haven't done a path in abyss or if you haven't done act six, hundred percent or both, or you, you, you aren't working on hundred percent abyss, you know, your, your options are definitely going to be a little bit more limited. Um, the same thing, if you're not doing AQ map seven, you're getting less of the T5 CC fragments and everything like that as well. So it's sort of like there does need to be a little bit of a delineation of a next progression up with throne breaker, you know, so that there is a differentiation in the player of like somebody doing map seven and it was 100 percent the game um but at the same time i think when these big offers come out there should be a little bit of a way for people to catch up so those are just kind of my thoughts uh, my advice to anybody is like don't be scared of rank threeing someone as if it's this like permanent decision you'll never be able to undo because sometimes you know you need to pick a champ like in my case elsa bloodstone or mysterio who isn't necessarily the best in the game but is still pretty good and they can do some good stuff for you in the contest anyway thanks for checking out the video guys and I will catch you in the next one.